Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this short video, we'll take a look at Justify Content Center in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've set up a simple flex container that's 1000 pixels wide and given it a gray background. Inside it, I've got a single child flex item with a width and height of 150 pixels. The Justify Content property in CSS Flexbox is applied to the parent flex container and determines how space is distributed between and around flex items along the main axis. The main axis is determined by the flex direction property. By default, flex direction is set to row and the main axis runs horizontally in the row direction. If the flex direction is set to column, the main axis runs vertically in the column direction. By default, Justify Content has a value of flex start, which positions any flex items right up against the starting edge of the flex container along the main axis. In our example here, we're working with the default flex direction of row, so our main axis runs horizontally and our single flex item is pushed up against the left side starting edge of our container. Any free space left over inside our parent flex container is aligned to the right of our flex items, this gray area here. Justify Content Center takes the free space inside the parent container, divides it in half, and then positions it either side of our child flex items. This distribution of free space has the effect of center aligning our flex items. If we target our parent flex container and set the justify content property to center, we can see in the browser that our child flex item is now aligned in the horizontal center of the container with the gray area of free space split in two and distributed around it on either side. This is because Justify Content aligns flex items along the main axis, and we're working with a flex direction of row here, so our main axis runs in the horizontal direction. To see how this alignment works with multiple elements, let's add in a second child flex item. As you can see, we now have two flex items inside our parent flex container and both items are aligned together in the center of the main axis. The combined width of the two flex items means that there is now less free space inside the parent container, but it's still distributed evenly on either side of the two items, pushing them together in the center of the container. Let's add in a third and fourth item, just for good measure, to see that this alignment works in the same way regardless of how many flex items you have in your container. As long as there is free space available to distribute around the items, all items will be positioned together in the center of the container. So, we understand that Justify Content aligns items along the main axis but what about the cross axis? If the main axis runs in the same direction as the flex direction of our parent container, the cross axis always runs in the opposite direction. In our example here, we're working with a flex direction of row, so our main axis runs in the horizontal direction. Our cross axis runs in the vertical direction, opposite to the main. Until now, the limited height of our parent flex container has meant that there is no space available on the cross axis for items to move into. If we increase the height of our parent flex container to 800 pixels, we can see that justify content only affects the main axis and has no impact on positioning items along the cross axis. The horizontal free space in our flex container is being distributed around our flex items so that they are aligned in the horizontal center. The vertical free space in the container 
which is the gray area below our flex items, is ignored and is not distributed. Our flex items remain at the top edge of the container, which is their default starting position on the cross axis. To align our flex items along the cross axis, we need to use the CSS Align Items property. That's a topic for another video, but I just wanted to touch on this to make sure you understand how the Justify Content property will only affect positioning along the main axis. Finally, let's change the flex direction of our parent container to column so that our flex items are stacked vertically in a column rather than horizontally in a row. By doing this, we also change the direction of the main axis. Rather than running in the horizontal row direction, our main axis now runs in the vertical column direction. Justify Content Center will now position our items in the vertical center of our flex container because it works along the main axis, which now runs vertically. We can see that the vertical free space has been distributed evenly above and below our flex items, positioning them in the vertical center of the container. The horizontal free space to the right of our flex items has been ignored, and our items remain pushed up against the left edge of the container, which is their default starting position along the horizontal cross axis. Again, if we wanted to affect positioning along the cross axis, we'd need to use the CSS Align Items property, but that's a topic for another video. I think that just about sums up the basics of Justify Content Center in CSS Flexbox. It's quite a simple property to remember. Along the main axis, any free space in the container is divided in half and distributed equally around the flex items positioning them together in the center. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.